Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha was born in Kathmandu, Nepal on 19th October 1797 to Rana Bahadur Saha and Kantivati. His mother, Kantivati, was living as a widow after child marriage, was spotted by his father, King Rana Bahadur Saha, while on pilgrimage. Rana Bahadur Saha had married Kantivati, promising to make her child his successor. Kantivati was the third woman whom Rana Bahadur Saha had married. She was a daughter of Brahman belonging to Mesra caste. This marriage to Kantivati was the result of romance. Ranodhyat Saha was the eldest male heir apparent of Rana Bahadur Saha but was not declared the heir to the throne because according to Rana Bahadur Saha, Ranodhyat's mother Suvarna Pravavati was only a concubine. The inscription on a big bell installed by Rana Bahadur Saha at Hanuman Dokha Palace in Kathmandu refers to Suvarna Prava as Bogya Rani or simply a concubine. Rana Bahadur Saha had married a widow Kantivati at that time when it is still considered a taboo. This anti-traditional steps initiated by Rana Bahadur Saha were opposed in different ways. Rana Bahadur Saha began to doubt whether Crown Prince Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha would be able to extend the throne after his death if the crisis prolonged. To make sure that Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha succeeded to the throne while Kantivati was still alive, Rana Bahadur Saha, is just 23, abdicated in the favor of his son on 8 March 1799, placing his first wife, Raj Rajeshwari, as the regent. Rana Bahadur Saha thought it would be wise if he enthrones his son, Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha, while he was still alive. Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha ascended the throne and became the king of Nepal at the age of one and a half years in 1799. Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha was the king of Nepal at the young age of one and a half years even though his father was alive. He is the fourth Saha dynasty king of Nepal. He had ruled under the regency of Queen Lalit Tripura Sundari and Prime Minister Bhimsen Papa. Queen Lalit Tripura Sundari was the fifth wife of Rana Bahadur Saha. She was the daughter of Kazi Noin Singh Tapa, brother of Bhimsen Tapa. During the reign of King Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha, the British government began to think of occupying the Tarai region of Nepal. Since early days, the King of Palpa had been occupying Butwal and Shura's territories in the Tarai region on the condition of paying revenue to the King of Awa. The Nepalese force has taken over Butwal and Shura's along with Palpa at the time of unification. After the assassination of Palpa's king, Prithvi Pal Sen, General Amar Singh Thapa, father of General Vimsan Thapa, was assigned the responsibility as the governor of Palpa. Butwal and Shuras were also under Amar Singh Thapa's administrative jurisdiction. The British took ownership of those areas after it captured the state of Awad. After then, the British rule were not willing to allow the Nepalese people to use the lands. So, the British government, General Lord Hastings, order Nepal government to leave Butwal and the 22 villages within 25 days. Bemsen Tapa refuses the proposal. After that, Lord Hastings declared war against Nepal on 1st November 1814. Battle of Kalanga or Nalapani The Battle of Nalapani was the first battle of the Anglo-Nepalese War of 1814-1816 fought between the force of British East India Company and Nepal. The battle took place around the Nalapani Fort near Dehradun. Lord Hastings, the then Governor General of India, declared war against Nepal on 1st November 1814. But 10 days before the declaration of war, Julepsi entered Dehradun. Balabhadra Kuwar was in charge of the Fort of Kalanga. Balabhadra Kuwar had only 600 persons with him, including women and children who reportedly shielded the bullets and cannonballs with their bodies, successfully held out against more than 5,000 British troops for over a month. Fighting broke out between the British and the Nepalese troops. General Gillespie, the British commander, was killed in the battle. The Nepalese troops 
hurled stones and logs of wood upon the enemy against their shower of bullets. The siege continued for a month until the British, convinced that they could not win by military ways, blocked the source of water to the fort so that the Nepalese would die of thirst. General Maubi, who succeeded Gillespie, cut off the source of water supply to the fort of Kalanga. As a result, lot of people died inside the fort due to shortage of water. For the Nepali army, it was hard struggle fighting a very well equipped and trained modern army belonging to one of the largest colonial empires of the world, the British Empire. When the Nepali survivors, about 70 in number, saw that they had no hope of surviving, opened the gate, came out of the fort and ran towards a stream nearby on 30th November 1814 AD. The British troops were surprised to see this. After they had quenched their thirst, the brave Balabhadra said to Britisher, You could have never won the battle, but now I myself voluntarily abandoned this fort. There is nothing inside the fort other than dead corpse of the children and women. Balabhadra Kumar said, Go and occupy the fort. We have deserted it. When the British troops entered the fort, they found there nothing but corpse. In this way, fighting for 39 days, the Nepalese troops went away but did not surrender before the British troops. Despite considerable odds, both in terms of number and firepower, Balavadra and his 600 strong garrison successfully held out against more than 5,000 British troops for over a month. Following the anglo nepali War, the British East India Company erected a war memorial at Nalapani in honor of the Gorkhalis and Captain Balabhadra Kuwar, offered referred to wrongly as Balbhadra Singh or Balbhadra Thapa, praising their bravery. The fighting around Nalapani more than any other battle established the reputation of the Gorkhas as warriors and won the admiration of the British. Even with only 70 remaining survivors after his source water had been cut off, Balavadra had refused to surrender and instead had charged out and successfully fought his way through the seas. In Nepal, the story of the Battle of Nalapani had gained a legendary status and has become an important part of the national historic narrative while Balavadra himself has become a national hero. The fighting spirit displayed by the Nepalese army in this and other following battles of Anglo-Nepalese war ultimately led to the recruitment of Gorkhas in the British Army. Battle of Jaitak The Battle of Jaitak is the subsequent battle fought by the 53rd Division of East India Company after the Battle of Nalapani against Nepalese force. Kazi Amar Singh Thapa's son, Ranajur Singh Thapa, was in charge of the defense of Jaitak. The Nepalese troops had a total strength of 2,200 persons, including women and children. They were attacked from two sides by 6,000 soldiers of British troops on 25th December 1814 AD. The British troops were armed with guns, whereas the Nepalese had cookery in their hands. The British troops suffered heavy losses in the battle. The British troops, along with Marathas, under the command of General Martin Dell, unsuccessfully attacked Jaitak three times. Battle of Persa British General Morley's troops advanced to attack Kathmandu through Hetauda. He divided his troops into three groups. He sent one from the right and another from the left and the third unit was commanded by Morley himself. All the units tried to advance towards Kathmandu. The Nepalese troops were commanded by Ranabir Singh Tapa, brother of Vimsan Tapa. He stayed at Makwanpur. All of a sudden, the Nepali captain Sir Baju Rana and Samser Rana attacked upon the British troops in Persa and Samanpur. The British commander had never thought that the attack would be so quick and sudden. The British commander was killed and his troops ran away. General Morley himself fled. From that attack, much arms and ammunition fell in the hands of Nepalese troops. Battle of Jitgar British Major General Wood was planning to invade Nuakot, but suddenly the Nepalese troops, under the leadership of Ujir Singh, 
attacked the British troops at Jitkurt near Butwal and shattered their plans. The British troops were unable to cope with the surprise attack, so they had to run away from the battlefield. Major General Wood now simply planned to defend Butwal and Gorakhpur. After three months, General Wood attacked Butwal again, but the Gorkhali troops drove the British troops out. Battle of Garwan Amar Singh Thapa was entrusted with the task of defending the West. A regiment of 6,000 British troops made a surprise attack upon 500 Nepalese troops and captured Nalagar and Ramgar. Amar Singh Thapa had stationed his troops at Garwan. The Nepalese troops took the offensive. The British troops were defeated and fled. Amar Singh Thapa showed an uncommon bravery in this battle. Battle of Deutel the 74 years old Vakti Tapa was in charge of the defense of Deutel and Suryagar. The nearby Malun fort also was not safe. Deutel was surrounded by British troops. Bhakti Tapa marched forward with a naked sword, beheading the enemies. The British troops were killing the Nepalese troops with guns and cannons. In the meantime, Bhakti Tapa was shot by a bullet in his thigh and he fell down. The British troops were surprised to see the bravery of Bhakti Thapa. They saluted the corpse of Bhakti Thapa for his bravery even though he was their enemy. Bhakti Thapa and his followers in the counter-attack appeared to have vowed to fight to the death. Bhakti Thapa had even handed his infant grandson to the custody of Amar Singh Thapa just before going to the battlefield. Bhakti Thapa laid down his life in the battlefield. Everyone who fought from the Nepali side was either killed or wounded. The British commander were thoroughly shaken by the bravery of Bhakti Thapa in the Deutel battle. Bhakti Thapa became a legend even in the eyes of British historians. The war went on for two years. Nepali warriors fought bravely and resisted the British attack in many places. Now, the British were ready to negotiate peace terms. The Nepal government also, without the knowledge and consent of Amar Singh Thapa, proposed a treaty. Actually, the treaty was in favor of the British, and according to the terms of the treaty, Nepal had to suffer a great loss for her territory. So, Nepal was compiled to sign a surrender treaty, that is, Sugauli Treaty, under humiliating circumstances on 2nd December 1815 AD. The treaty was handed over to East India Company with King's approval only on 4 March 1816 AD. Nepal was obliged to surrender one by third of the total land to the company. Nepal lost the coal areas like Kumau, Garhwal, Nainital and Darjeeling. The treaty required Nepal to relinquish land it had won in the war, to keep British representative in the Kathmandu to recruit Gorkhas in the British Army and to deprive Nepal of the right to retain American or European staff. The Mechi River became the new eastern border and the Mahakali River the western border of the kingdom. According to the treaty, Nepal had to allow for the establishment of the permanent British resident in Kathmandu and had to forego all self-determination in foreign affairs. During Girvan Yuddha Bikram Shah's reign, the Battle of Nalapani or Kalanga, Battle of Jaitak, Battle of Jitgar, Battle of Devtal, Battle of Garhwal, Anglo-Nepal War were fought. The Treaty of Sugauli was signed in the favor of British because of which Nepal suffered a great territorial loss. On 20th November 1816, King Girvan Yuddha Bikram Shah died of smallpox Age just 19. Girvan Yuddha Bir Bikram Saha had two wives, Siddhi Lakshmi Devi Saha and Goraksha Raja Lakshmi Devi Saha. The first wife committed sati with Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha, while the second wife also died of smallpox after 14 days of Girvan Yuddha Saha death. Thus, Girvan Yuddha Bikram Saha was succeeded by his only son, Rajendra Bikram Saha, an infant of three years old after 18 days of his father's death on 8 December 1816. During his infancy, his grandmother Lalit Tripura Sundari and Vincent Thapa 
rule the country. Thank you.